Healing is a byproduct of our relationship with the healer. Man, when we receive Jesus, we receive the healer on the inside of us. That's good news. Amen. Stay tuned for more. Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Terrades. Hello and welcome to Abundant Life. We're so glad you joined us today. My name is Ashley Terrades and this is my wife, Carly. And we're right here talking about relationship with God. Do you know that your healing, whatever you need, comes through your relationship with God? Amen. This is powerful. So we're excited today that you're here with us. What yeah. have you got, Carly? I mean, this is really good news because it means that we don't have to run around all over the place trying to find just the right set of circumstances, the right type of person, the right type of anointing. We don't have to jump through hoops. Heal receiving healing is not based on circumstances, on a particular person, or even our own performance. Amen. It's good. We can access the healing power of God through relationship with him. That means direct between us and him. So that you don't even have to go to a conference. I mean, we have, you don't have to. We have healing conferences all around the country, and all around the world, in fact. Mm -hmm. You can find them on our website. But we're telling you, you don't even have to come to a healing conference to get healed. Now, if you want healing, it's a good idea to get amongst like-minded believers mm -hmm. and get an atmosphere of faith. But what we're saying is, don't be trusting in conferences. Don't be trusting in men and women of God. Be trusting in your relationship with Jesus. Amen. Jesus is your healer. Amen. Amen. This is good news. Let's look at this in 2 Peter chapter 1, okay? It's, it starts out here, um, I'm going to start in verse 2. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus, our Lord. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who has called us by His own glory and excellence, by which He has been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, so that through these promises you might become partakers of the divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Right. Now there's a lot in that passage there, but this is talking about relationship. It's talking about grace and peace being multiplied to us, multiplied in our lives, in us and through us, and coming through the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Now, this word for knowledge is talking about a type of intimacy. This isn't talking about, you know, hey, I just met somebody on the bus. Right. This is talking about a meaningful relationship, right. like a marriage relationship. Right. right, knowledge talking about how, you know, a man and woman know each other. It's an intimacy. Right. It's not just about casual knowing. Mm -hmm. So when we know Jesus, I love how it's got here. The emphasis on here is about knowing God and about our relationship with him. And the, the verse two there, it says, you know, uh, multiply to you in the knowledge of God and have a Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know the true nature of God, if you don't know that God is good, that God is loving, mm -hmm. if you don't know that God loves you, it's gonna be hard for you to receive from him. We need to know these things. We need to know the true nature of God. We mm -hmm. need to know God intimately. And He wants to know us intimately right. so we can receive from Him. Right. You know, we're coming towards the end of a series on, on healing at this point. So if you haven't listened, if this is the first time you've tuned in, then you need to go back and watch the previous um, episode so that it makes more sense to you. But we've laid a foundation throughout this course that healing is God's will, that healing is good, that God is only good and He only has good gifts for us, that sickness and disease are, are a fruit of the enemy. They're not from God. God is not trying to put sickness and disease on us to teach us something. And we've talked about how healing was part of the atonement that Jesus paid for on the cross. And at the same time that we received salvation in, in, into our hearts, we received Jesus. That means we received the healer and healing and salvation are inseparable. They're yeah. both part of the very same package for which Jesus has already paid for. So healing is one of the promises that it's referring to right here in this passage. It says, His divine power has given to us all things. That's everything, nothing missing, right? Yeah. Everything that we're ever going to need to for, that pertain to life and godliness. That means everything that we're ever going to need to, to live successful, happy, healthy lives comes through one way, and that is through the knowledge of Him. That is through an intimate relationship with Jesus. Amen. That's good. Not like a, just a casual knowing like, hey, here's my 10 minutes, Jesus, your time's up, I'm getting on, my, on with my day. This is talking about quality and quantity time, like a marriage type relationship. You know, it'd be a pretty sad marriage that we'd have, Ashley and I, if the only time I went to Ashley was when, you know, I wanted something or I needed something, I needed him to fix something or pay for something or do something for me, right? Well. Okay, now here comes the marriage is, stories. This is true <laughs> because, um, how many of you know that uh, a little secret about Carly is we've been married over 20 years now and um, she's never actually put gas in a car at all, ever. Not whilst in living life. in America. So I don't think you ever did it in England either, have you? Been. You never put gas in the car. Well, you ever. always did it. So things like this, she does actually come for me, come to me for <laughs> things 
can you fix this, can you fix that, can you put gas in the car and things like that. In fact, I went on a trip and she said, can you fill up all three cars and leave them all full <laughs> of gas so like... that while you're away, <laughs> I can just use one car when it runs out of gas. Use the next car, so they all, so I can, so I don't have to put gas right. in the car. Right, well, that's so. because I'm a princess. You don't want to put gas in the mm -mm. car. No, okay. I have I have a husband for that. So, <laughs> so, so part of this <laughs> all is all the feminists to get really comes, upset. I know, at she this comes point. to me for stuff, and that's fine. I don't mind that. But no, I know what you're saying. We have a loving relationship, mm -hmm. and out of that loving relationship, it's actually a pleasure to do things for you. I hope it's a pleasure oh. for you to do things for me, to serve me. I love pairing up your socks, honey. Pairing up my socks. In fact, what I did was, <laughs> if you want a marriage tip, here's a top marriage tip. I threw out all my socks, all of them. I, and I got brand new, I got like 20 pairs of brand new socks that are all, all the same. Yeah, and then there's no pairing of socks. There's no flesh burning it to happen. It's the best like $25 I've ever spent. It means no more pairing of socks. Peace in the, all my in socks the marriage are the same. right there, marriage tip. All my socks are the same. It's awesome. It's a great Amazing. thing. It's SD. a beautiful day. Anyway, anyway, we say all that to say, a marriage relationship is, is intimate, it's loving, it's and there's also a, a wanting to help each other and, and serve each other and doing things with each other. But when Carly married me, she got everything she needed, you know, she got all of, everything I have became hers. I got your name. She took on my name. Your she authority. Took everything, authority, all that. It was yeah. awesome. She took on everything that was in the bank, the whole $25 was yours. <laughs> <laughs> when we got married, we were like, we were like 19 years old. We didn't have much. We couldn't pay attention. <laughs> we, we, we were so poor, we couldn't pay attention. But everything I had was yours, honey, and, and vice versa. So that's how it works. And that's the same with Jesus. When we, we know Jesus wants a marriage relationship with us. He doesn't want us to just have a, you know, 10 minute, uh, you know, dating relationship. He wants to be married. To, he wants intimacy, uh, intimacy with us, right. an intimate relationship. He wants to know everything about us and he wants us to know everything about him. Mm -hmm. And it's powerful when we do that. That, that yeah. takes time. It does. It takes quality, no quality and quantity time. Mm -hmm. There's no quick fix to that. And, and here it says that through these things, you know, we access the great and precious promises that God has provided for us, but that we might become partakers of the divine nature. And that means to take part, to be a partaker means to take part. Relationship is two ways. That's deep. Right? Partakers is to take part. It is. You heard it here first. See, Greek scholar right it's here. It's deep. But it, mean, it means to take part. It's, it's two way. It's not all God loving us and us not loving, loving God or the mm -hmm. other way around. You know, it's talking and listening. Yeah. That's part of developing a relationship. I meet a lot of people in the course of ministry, especially that are suffering with sickness and disease. And you might be thinking, what has all this got to do with receiving healing? Well, absolutely everything. Because it's through our relationship that we access the healing power that God's provided for us. You know, in, in just in, in travels in ministry, I meet people all the time that are dealing with sickness and disease and come from ministry. And we find that when people are dealing with especially long-term sickness and disease, that it has become a huge part of their life. You know, um, sickness and disease just doesn't affect the person that's sick. Mm. It affects the family, those people around them. It impacts finances. It puts strains on strains on a marriage, mm -hmm. on on other relationships, um, on whoever's caring for you, on siblings. I mean, there's all kinds of of strains that a sickness puts on the on a family unit, other than just the physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. But in in that trying to just juggle all of those different balls. You know, doctor's appointments, hospital appointments, um, trying to make ends meet, trying to pay medical bills, trying to, to just live, just mm -hmm. survive, just make it through the day. You know, it's oftentimes our relationship with the Lord that suffers the most. And it's our relationship with the Lord that can provide the very answer to the problem that we're searching mm -hmm. for. It's kind of like a double-edged sword. And that takes quantity and quality time. And you see, sickness and disease is, is, is competing for our attention. You know, those symptoms, that pain on the inside of us, it's saying, hey, listen to me, it's shouting really loud, right? right? All of those things. But it's, it's through relationship that we, we receive healing. And, you know, many times people run around to our meetings or other people's meetings, just searching for the next healing evangelist to come into town that, that might lay hands on them and help them receive. And I found that in searching, especially our testimony, we've walked through healing um, myself physically. I've been healed from numerous different conditions, but also our daughter from a terminal condition. She was healed at three years old. She's 15 years old today. She was supernaturally healed by the power of God. And those, those miracles manifest not because a particular person laid hands on either of us, but because we discovered that healing comes as a byproduct of our relationship with the healer. And as we started to search for the healer, we found the healing. Amen. That's really true. It's good. It's profound. It's actually profound. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it really starts with understanding that God loves us. You know, it says that we love because God loved us first. 
And when we understand God's love for us, I'm telling you what, it just, it's awesome. I remember uh, early on in my Christian life, I got born again when I was 16. I was all about loving God. I want to love God more, love God more. And really, we haven't even got the capacity to love God like we should. Right. We, we need to receive God's love first. And when you receive God's love and you understand how much God loves you, man, it just makes the relationship. It's, it's yeah. powerful. So I really want to encourage you. If you're one of these people that say, well, I don't know how to love God. Don't worry. Just, just believe his love for you. Just focus on how much he loves you. And uh, that really is the truth. You know, like I said, um, he, we love him because he first loved us. And he loves us so much. You know, John 3, 16, he loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son. You know, he's, he loves you that much. And uh, God's love, faith works by love. God is love. You're going to receive your healing by understanding how much God loves you. When you realize how much God loves you and how much he wants you well, more than you want to be well, he wants you out of that pain. He wants you out of that sickness. It's going to really unlock some things for you. So I want to really encourage you today if you're watching. You know, actually, you don't know my past. You don't know what, what I've been through. You don't know what I've done. You know what? That doesn't matter. Jesus has covered it for you. Jesus paid the price for everything in your past. And when you got born again, you become a new creation. And I'm telling you, God loves you right where you are. Amen. doesn't matter where you've been, what side of the tracks you grew up on, what you've done in your past. God loves you for who you are. He's, he loves you because of his love, not because, of, you, not because you're lovely. He loves you because of his love. And I want to encourage you, let that love of God sink in you. Start meditating on that love. Start realizing God loves you. And sometimes it takes faith. Mm -hmm. It takes faith to really believe, you know what, God loves me. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, a, that's a faith statement, but start making that faith statement. Start mm -hmm. making that faith statement. You know what, God loves me uh, just as I am, praise God. And that's really going to help with this relationship. Absolutely. You know, we've been talking through this series about one of the ways to access healing is through faith. You know, we access all the promises of God through faith. It's just saying yes to Jesus. I mean, mm -hmm. it's that simply putting our trust, being fully persuaded that what God says about us is the truth mm -hmm. and having more confidence in that than how we feel or, or what the situation looks like. Start by believing that God loves you. Man, if the, if the world could just get a revelation of, the, of, of love, God's love, that would fix most of its problems. But Galatians 5 verse 6 says that faith, that your faith works by love, by understanding, by having a revelation of how much God loves you. Our faith starts to come alive. It starts to become effective on the inside of us. That is our ability to even respond to God with trust and confidence. And, um, you know, we, we need to, people often ask me actually, um, how do I know if I'm in faith? Right. Well, one of the ways I like to explain it is um, there's peace in faith. Mm. Just like there is a security that comes from knowing that you're loved, from knowing that you're safe, that you're protected, whether that's the love of a family home or a loving relationship that comes from a spouse, even more so there is a peace and a confidence that comes from understanding that we're children of the Most High God, that God will provide for His kids, that He doesn't, uh, he doesn't see the righteous begging for bread. He's not going to leave us or forsake us, that He's always with us, that He's given us precious promises, amen, that He's provided healing for us in, 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 every, in every area of our life. Meditating on those things produces peace because there's faith in there. Where there's faith, there's peace. Where there's peace, there's faith. And, you know, Isaiah 26, 3 says, He who keeps his mind stayed upon the Lord is kept in perfect peace. And we can follow that peace in our life where there's peace and faith go together. Let's look at this in Mark chapter 5. Now, this is um, the, the story about the woman with the issue of blood. She had been sick for a very long time. So it says here, this is with the woman with the issue of blood. Um, we're going to start in, in verse 25, Mark 5, 25. And a certain woman had a hemorrhage for 12 years. That's a long time. And had suffered much under many physicians. She spent all that she had and was not better, but rather grew worse. And I know that there are people here that you feel like you've tried everything. You know, you've got medical bills that are just racked out of control. You don't know how to, how to pay for stuff. There's that, that constant worry, how am I going to pay my bills? And you're still not any better, mm -hmm. right? So maybe not only can you not work, but you can't, you can't pay bills either. It's even grow worse. I mean, it's even grow worse. Some of this treatment, I mean, we're not against doctors, we're not against medicine. But it's expensive. God wants you well, but some of it, yeah, the side effects alone. I mean, you see some of these commercials, they'll tell you this medicine, you know, you have a migraine, they tell you this medicine, and then it gives you all the side effects. And, right. You know, it may include death and things like that. It's <laughs> right. like, I think I'd rather stick my so, so this woman here, she spent all her money on many doctors and many medicines, and she actually grew worse, not better. Right. She said she had heard of Jesus. When she'd heard of Jesus, rather, she came in the crowd behind him and touched his garment. For she said, 
This is, you see, we receive from God according to how we believe mm -hmm. and according to how we speak. We've mentioned this in, in previous episodes here. But she said, if I may touch his garment, I shall be healed. And immediately the, her hemorrhage dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Mm. You see, her point of contact was if I go, she'd heard about Jesus. So she was there in the crowd because she'd heard that healing was going on. Right? She came with this, expectancy. You can look, I think it's in Mark 3. There's, there's several cases where it said people touched Jesus and were healed. Mm -hmm. People the, the people thronged against Jesus and as they touched him, they were healed and people touched Jesus and healed. So she'd heard. She'd heard some stories she'd about this. She'd heard some stories about people touched Jesus and they were healed. So mm -hmm. she was like, I'm going to touch Jesus and I'm going to get healed. Faith Amen. comes by hearing and hearing Amen. by the word of God. But here's the other thing. She determined in her heart how she was going to receive her healing. Mm -hmm. Now she could have said, I'm just going to stretch out my arm and be healed. Mm. Or I'm just going to go lay down on the floor in front of Jesus and be healed. But she said, you know, God will work with whatever we put out there for him to work with. Amen. Amen. So according to, to our faith, let it be unto us. She said, if I touch his garments, that's where my healing is going to be. And actually garments are very significant all the way through scripture. They are symbolic of identity and authority. And especially the, the, at the hem, you know, when... Um, in, in some translations, it says at the hem, well, that's where the tassels would have been. Mm -hmm. Now, tassels back then were a symbol of authority. That's why when David was in the in the cave with uh, Saul when he was king, mm -hmm. and he could have killed Saul right there. I mean, David was hiding in the cave. He was hiding, and, and Saul, Saul came, came in. in to relieve himself right? to go to the bathroom. Sometimes he's going to go take care of business, right? Came in, and uh, David right in had of the David. opportunity to kill him, but he wasn't going to touch him because he was the Lord's anointed. Mm -hmm. Instead, he cut off his tassel, and that was, you know, the reason Saul was so upset was because that was a symbol of authority. Mm. And so when, when she touched the hem of his garment, it wasn't by accident. But it says, nevertheless, it says that she was healed of the affliction. Well, at once Jesus knew within himself that power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? His disciples are like, well, you know, everyone's pressing around you. What do you mean who touched you? He looked around to see the woman, but um, the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what happened, came, fell down at his feet and told him the entire truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So this is interesting to me, but you know, it says up here in the previous verse, in verse 29, she was healed immediately of her affliction. Mm -hmm. Whereas Jesus is saying, go in peace and be healed. So what are we talking about? When was she healed? Right. How was she healed? Well, she was healed immediately of her affliction here, but the word healed is a different, it's a different meaning right down here when Jesus repeats it in verse 34. This is talking, this is talking, this is a hegis, right? And it means to be made whole, to be made complete. Like if, um, if something was missing, if, if there was a limb missing, if there was, if mm. the, they use this as well uh, when they're talking about lame people becoming healed. This is talking about, um, becoming completely whole. See, there's a difference between healed and being whole. Mm. And Jesus wanted to give this woman much more than just a physical healing. He wanted her to be whole in every sense of the word. In the Amplified Version, it says, he, Jesus' response is, continue in peace and be permanently healed. Mm. And that's quite different, isn't it? You see, good. the relationship that we have with Jesus, it's not just about getting something from Jesus one time, right? But he wants to have a relationship so he can live in us and through us in every area of our life. The only way that this woman could be permanently healed of her affliction was to go in peace. Actually, go in peace, it, it, it's the way that it's written in the tense that it was written is a continuous action. It means to continue in the direction of peace and give yourself wholly to it. Yeah. It means to go into peace, to go into relationship, into peace. That word peace, that's talking about just not just a state of mind, but a peace in every area. In fact, to set at one again, to set back to how things were supposed to be. God wants today to set us back to how things are supposed to be, how he designed mm. the world to be for us. Amen. He wants us to live in all of his promises, in all of his peace, in every area of our life, not just healing, peace in our mind, peace in our emotions, peace in, in, in our families, in our relationships, peace in our finances. Yeah. In fact, just earlier in this, in this same um, passage here, you know, just a little bit before then, you know, that you meet um, a man that was, com was totally tormented 
by an ev by evil spirits, by demons. This is legion. Mm -hmm. Okay, just earlier in the chapter, in the, the healing of the demoniac, he says, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran up and kneeled before him. And he said, I adjure you, God, do not torment me. For Jesus said to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And you know what happened? This man, he, he, he was tormented. This is mm -hmm. a different kind of tormenting, right? He was tormented in his mind. The, I mean, these days, the, the demonic influence is still active in the world and it, it manifests in different ways, whether that's sickness and disease, whether that's mental illness. Um, this man, he was separated from society because he was mentally ill. In fact, the other day mm -hmm. I was in Starbucks with a That's pastor right. friend of mine and we was, uh, we was just talking, we were sat together, it was a busy Starbucks and we were sat together. We just had a conference. We'd both been speaking at this conference and he's a pastor of mine. He has a, a church down in, in Houston, Texas. And we were talking about the Lord and the goodness of God and how, how Jesus healed people. And as we was talking together like this, there's a man um, fairly close to us on his laptop and um, he was just getting agitated. You could see him getting agitated. We kept talking about Jesus and about the goodness of God, and he kept getting agitated. As you were mentioning the name of Jesus. As we were talking about Jesus, he kept getting agitated. And I, I could see him in the corner of my eye, something's mm -hmm. going on here. And then, and then he started talking, he started shouting. And started, I, started, I couldn't really make out what he was saying, but I was like, is he on a Skype call, you know, like a FaceTime call, or what's going on here? Then he just punches the table and he gets up and he turns around and he looks right at me. And I never, never made eye contact with him before. No, no, just, he just looks right at me. He goes, he, he says, he goes, leave me alone. He goes, I know what you're trying to do. He goes, leave me alone. And I was like, so I, looked, really at him, I, said, random. I looked at him and my friend, my friend who was with me, the pastor, he's ex-army. I thought, this is great. He's, cause this <laughs> he's guy, this guy who got up was big. I mean, he's a buff guy. He got up and he's like staring at me, goes, leave me alone, all this, and, and started having to go at me. And I'm thinking, well, at least I've got my friend here, my pastor friend here. He used to be ex-army. He's going to look after me. I turn around and he's deep in prayer. He's like, <laughs> it's like he doesn't want to get involved. Now, but authority come over me. You know what? I realized this is just a, it's just a demon. It's just a devil. No one in the restaurant, in the, in the coffee shop turned around. It was really bizarre. I just looked straight at the guy in the eye and I said, sit down. And he said, you can't tell me to sit down. And I said, just sit down and, and be calm. Just sit down. He said, you can't tell me to sit down. He started reading. He said, I know what, he said, I've had unclean, he said, I've had evil spirits tormenting me. He goes, I know what you're doing. Evil spirits are tormenting me. And I said to him, we have the spirit of God in us. I said, you need to sit down right now. And he went, you can't tell me to sit down. And I looked him right in the eye. I went, I went back down. I just looked him right in the eye. I said, just sit down. And sure enough, he sat back down. And then he put headphones on, went back on his laptop, like nothing had happened. It was bizarre. Yeah. And no one in the, in the coffee shop even looked around. So we stayed there. We was going to leave, but we're like, well, now this has happened. We can't leave right away. So <laughs> right. we stayed there for another half an hour or so. And then as we left, I, I went up to him and I greeted him. I said, how are you doing? And he looked at me and said, I don't know you. And I said, well, you do know Ken? I went to shake his hand. He said, I don't know who you are. He said, I'm good. And it was like it never happened. And these, sometimes you know, these demons manifest, especially when, the, when Jesus right. is around. When a lot, I know a lot of times in healing conferences, we'll see you know, the devil trying to distract people and trying to do it things to, to take people's attention. That, it's nothing to be scared of. You have authority. Uh, as a born again believer, you have authority. They can't do anything against you. That you, you, know, you, can, you can have authority over them. So it's no big deal. But it's interesting how evil spirits are still around and they still try and distract us. That's right. And um, and just like just like then, you know, in in this in this instance with the with the man um, with Legion, um, even though he was um, he was not in his right mind, right. he was played by um, these demons. He, those demons were not powerful enough to stop him throwing him at Jesus' feet. Right. And sometimes people ask me, well, what if the you know what if the sickness or disease I'm dealing with is demonic? Well, all sickness and diseases ultimately, ultimately are demonic. The they all originate all that way. Yeah, yeah. They all originate that way, even if they're, they're just naturally in our body. You know, sickness and disease is a fruit of the enemy. But that doesn't stop us from throwing ourselves at the feet of Jesus. Amen. And when Jesus encountered this man, look at what it says here. They came to Jesus and saw him who had been possessed with the legion of demons sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Amen. And those who saw him told how it would befell on him who had possessed him with the demons and also the swine. You see... When any kind of sickness, any kind of disease, any kind of demonic influence, when it comes into the presence of, of Jesus, when it comes into relationship with Jesus, it has to flee. Amen. And peace is what's left in its place. You know, um, Jesus says in, in John chapter 14, a couple of times actually, my peace I leave with Amen. you, my peace I give to you. I've come Amen. that you might have peace. We have the supernatural power of peace in the person of Jesus. It's part of the atonement that he paid for. Yeah. Peace in our bodies, peace in our finances, peace in our minds and in our relationships. That supernatural power of peace resides in our bodies and overcomes the power of darkness. You know, um, 
Isaiah 26, 3, he who keeps his mind stayed upon the Lord is kept in perfect peace. Amen. If you need peace in one of the areas that we've talked about today, know that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. And he's come to bring you peace so that you don't have to be in torment in any area. Amen. That's the truth right mm -hmm. there. He wants you in peace. He doesn't want you, he doesn't want you to be anxious or, or, or uh, stressed out. We're at the end of the show. We want to pray mm -hmm. before we let mm -hmm. you go. So thanks for joining us today. We're excited about this because we know God has good things for you, praise God. Amen. And He wants you well in every area of your life, praise God. So let us pray for you. Father God, I thank you for everyone watching and listening today. I thank you, Lord, you only have mm -hmm. good for them. And I thank you, Lord, you're going to give them peace as they meditate mm -hmm. on your love for them. When they meditate on your word, you're going to give them peace. You're going to give them uh, just a, a total peace and a trust in you. I thank you, Lord, their relationship is going to another level as they meditate on your love for them. And they're going to be able to receive all the good things you have for them. They're going to receive their healing. They're going to receive their, their peace. They're going to receive all the things you have for them. I thank you, Lord, you love them. You love every person watching and listening today with an unconditional mm -hmm. love. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I feel like there are some people watching that are dealing specifically um, with, with t torment in their minds. Mm. But the Lord is saying you can be free from that too. Amen. Whatever you've been diagnosed with, if it's schizophrenia, if it's bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. if it's depression, if it's addictions, the Lord is the healer of all those things too. Amen. Amen. There is nothing too big for Jesus. Amen. We speak healing to your mind in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. We speak sound mind Amen. right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, thanks for being with us. We'll be back real soon. And until next time, remember, don't just settle for living a normal life when you could live the Abundant Life. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com or call us at 719-600-3344. Hey, thanks for being with us today. We've been talking about the peace of God and about the love of God for us, how we can receive the goodness of God, we can receive His healing and uh, we can receive His peace, whatever the situation. You know, these TV programs are only short, but we have so much more to share with you. We would love you to get the resources available. They're on your screen. Get those resources. They're going to teach you the Word of God. We're going to go deeper into this subject. There's far more to share with you. So go ahead, follow the instructions on the screen, and we look forward for you listening to these other teachings. We want to thank the friends and partners of Teradez Ministries. Your faithful financial support enables us to produce the Abundant Life program and spread the good news of God's love around the world. If you have been blessed by this program, we invite you to donate and partner with Teradez Ministries. Visit our website, teradezministries.com and become a partner today. Coming up next on the Abundant Life program. And we believe, you know, a lot of the time when it comes to healing, it's good to, to believe God in an area. You know, sometimes it's too much. Our hearts can't go there to believe God for the whole package in one go. Sometimes it's good to break it down. And, you know, there's been various times I've seen people healed by breaking it down into one area at a time. I say to them, what can you believe God for right now? And, you know, their hearts might not be ready to see them completely healed whatever yep. they're suffering with, but they can believe for, well, I could believe for the pain to go. They just, they just stop. I can believe, yeah, I can believe for, you know, this to happen. Mm -hmm. And we pray for them and they see that little victory and that really uh, spurs them on. It really like encourages them effect. for the next one. Yeah, yeah. Why live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life? Join us next time for the Abundant Life program with Ashley and Carly Teredes.